And when you would normally try to come up with what they call the key build process, I think I also explained it earlier, well, what happens now is it takes that information that it has stored in U20. It also takes the information it has in regards to seed keys that are in high order RAM of U20. And it does the computation or the DES out computation outside of U7. U7 in the new boards really serve no useful purpose. They can't be utilized as like the old ones. So basically what happens is this whole key build process, okay, is being done outside of U7 between U30, U20, and U19. This key build process comes up with that common monthly key. And that common monthly key is the same in any box for a given service ID. And it works just like that in a wizard, except it doesn't care about the authorization data, it doesn't care about all that other stuff. It just does its job when it's done. Can I tell you? What happens now is basically once all the keys are found, it says it. All the keys are found and displays them on the bottom of the screen as you can see here. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to load these up in a standard 010 board and authorize the unit and show that this is not BS. It is true and that the programmers should definitely definitely look into this and if they want a demonstration please feel free to contact me at Lee Hadlock Inc and I'll be glad to show you okay go zero okay go zero key zero zero is Fox you want to read them off sure Fox, Fox Charlie. Charlie one Baker one Bravo on Bravo. Charlie, seven. Charlie, seven. Five, eight. Five, eight. Two, Delta? Two, yes, Delta. Zero, two. Zero, two. Four, three. Four, three. Enter, zero, one. Okay. Okay. Zero, seven. Zero, seven. Baker, one. Bravo, one. Bravo, one, right. Two Bravo. Two Bravo. Five six. Five six. Delta Bravo. Delta Bravo. Eight two. Eight two. Two eight. Two eight. Enter zero two. Okay. Delta Charlie. Delta Charlie. Seven Frank. Seven Fox. Fox. <laughs> you can tell who put their Morse code and who didn't. Four, five. Four, five. Army. Four, six. Four, six. Alpha, Charlie. Alpha, Charlie. Six, five. Six, five. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Delta, nine. Delta, nine. Edward, three. Edward, three? <laughs> Echo, Echo three. three. Okay. <laughs> Six Frank. Six Fox. 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 Okay. One, two. One, two. Uh what do you call it? Edward three. <laughs> no, Echo. Echo three. <laughs> four 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 Fox. Fox. Four Fox. <laughs> Getting there, Lee. Yeah. And Echo four. Oh Echo my god, four. he made it. Alright, let's go they back. I don't know how many more to put in. That's what it was, Alpha 1. Set up 2. Yeah, set up 3. Want to check them? Okay. The neat thing about this is this I'll freezes up, it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fox Charlie 1, Bravo Charlie 7, 5, 8, 2, Delta 0, 2, 4, 3, 0, 7, Bravo 1, 2, Bravo 5, 6, Delta Bravo 8, 2, 2, 8. Delta Charlie 7, Fox 4, 5, 4, 6, Alpha Charlie 6, 5, 7, 8, Delta 9, Echo 3, 6, Fox 1, 2, Echo 3, 4, Fox, Echo 4. Yeah. And help does a reset, which is nice. All right, let me go set up 56247. Enter. I'm going to put an alpha 5 in there. Enter. 6223. Enter. I'm going to put a delta 0 in there. Enter. What are, the, what are you putting in? What is this? You what we're doing here is just putting in a few little extra bytes in the monthly authorization field. 
because yes. it's authorized. Yes, so it authorizes very cleanly. Yeah. Quickly. Wait, I don't understand. It's not really necessary. But just you, what? Oh, just so you have something there. Yeah. See, in other words, in a normally truly unauthorized box, you're not going to have a five sitting there. It's going to have service ID zero none. zero. Normally, in factory condition, hmm. it would say none. Here, I'll show you. Set up five sixty two forty seven. Enter zero zero. Enter. Set up one. Zero D, then up five, six, two, two, three, enter, zero, zero, enter. Here you go. Okay. There. Set up five, six, two, So what we're trying seven. to do is, is make it think it is. The, it, well, it, what we're, know? go ahead. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to put the box into a state right now that it believes everything's healthy and it'll take a good hit with no Otherwise, problem. Otherwise, if the, let's say your dish is marginal, your signal is not so swift, the first hit coming down, it may not register every single bite. And it might not be enough. There might not be enough to make it work, and then you have gotta wait for the second. One of the ways that you can tell if your board is an 0181 clone is with, with what they call the RamView chip, okay? The RamView chip would install in a standard socket and would allow you to display the entire contents of U20 on your screen. Now I want you people to realize that if you put a stock chip in your board to check to see what the ID number is, you're going to wipe out the information that's put in U20 to allow the clone to work. That's why it's important that you use a RAM view. The reason that you would utilize a RAM view is because it does not affect the U20 area in any way, shape, or form. What you see is what you get, but it does not step on any of those areas or locations like a normal stock chip would. What, do you see, what will you see, though, when you look at it? All right. Once you've recorded all this data on the screen, you can go to high order RAM. And about location 6500, 6, let's see, 6600, and you'll see the seed key data that's, that has been encrypted. And you possibly might be able to look at 6235, 6236, 37, and 38 and see what the real ID number is. Normally what happens when you put a stock chip in there, the ID number is erased because the first thing it does when it powers up is extract the ID number and put it into U20 in those areas. So if you use any other chip than a RAM view, you're going to step on those areas and it's not going to work anymore. You're going to have the wrong ID number. So that's, that's something to remember. Yeah, in, in some regards, it takes a little longer to get going, per se, in a 0181 clone atmosphere than it does a normal box. Because of those computations are being done outside of U7, it takes a little longer. So, I mean, the, the processor U19 is already bogged down with BS. It's now bogged down with the DES algorithm that is normally computed in U7. So that sometimes takes a little longer. That's why the wizard technology is very quick, because it doesn't need that, that long time to lock up. So, that's about it. Well, you've seen cloning. It's pretty impressive. You manufacturers and distributors, and particularly you programmers, should recognize that you all are participating in this great farce. You all are making general instruments richer every day. And for what reason? Don't you think they should have to answer to some of you? Why is this happening? Why is the video cipher so easily compromised? As long as you don't ask that question, as long as you don't force them to come clean, and as long as you don't take them to court for taking your money and everybody else's for a product that only persons making any money on it is them and some chippers, until you do that, you're going to keep on paying them out. They're going to keep on taking that money to the bank. They had the best year of their life last year, and you helped make it for them. Well, if all this cloning wasn't bad enough and confusing enough, let me now introduce you to the wizard technology. Now, brother, 
If Coney didn't scare General Instruments, I can assure you that this technology does. Because with this installed in the video cipher, you no longer need seed keys. You no longer need an identification number. The person that owns this chip simply every month or every other month or every four months, depending upon how General Instruments is sending the data stream, loads it in from their front panel very simply, and the chip turns on everything that he turns, authorizes it for via the, the information he sends in through the front panel. Here's a better explanation of it. I'd like to talk to everybody out there about a little bit is the keyboard wizard. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that, that the programmers out there realize, you know, that this is a definite problem. And if you'd like to see this, please feel con you know, free to contact me and I'll be glad to show it to you. Okay. Keyboard wizard. As you probably saw in an earlier tape, or they might edit in some of it, uh, it does not need an authorization mask. It does not need a monthly key. It does not need an ID number. Basically what it does is you feed it what it wants to see to begin with, or what it tries, a normal box tries to make, is what they call the working key. Now, over the past couple of weeks, I've been called a liar. I've been told this is a clone. And what I'd like to do is show that they're full of stuff, I guess you could say. First of all, the keyboard wizard, as you're familiar with, as you can see from the standard screen here, this is a setup zero screen, which shows the top line is the working key. Setup nine allows you to key in the working key. And setup eight allows you to key in the service ID. Understand that for every service ID, there's a different working key. Okay? The other thing that's important to know is that every service ID also has a month code in correspondence with its working key. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this board, I'm going to put in one of my repair chips, and I'm going to let you view every section of U20 RAM on the screen to prove that this is not a clone. And I'm going to go to low order memory and I'm going to start with location 6000. Now, as you can see, this is no 181 board. That's been dorked. And you can see the true ID number. Nothing. Zip. Zilch. I know you say, I can put anything I want up there. But now I will show you all of U20 RAM. 6000. Zero, zero, zero. If you want to, please feel free to put on a VCR at this time. And what you can do is look at every individual section of this so that you can show that I'm not full of stuff. I'm doing is I'm showing all the information in regards to U20 RAM and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm allowing the experts out there to actually see that this is not a clone. Where would the ID number have been on this if it was an ID, if it was an ID number? I'll, I'll show that to you in a moment. This is location 6100. Ah, you say I can put the monthly keys and the authorization mask elsewhere. Well, I shall continue. Wait, where should they have been there? 6100. Okay, I'll show it again. Basically, right after the Alpha 524-3853-1308, you would have your authorization mask, your monthly key, and the pay-per-view bytes, etc. But they're not there. That's correct.
And you're taking in these increments so that you go you go all the way up. Right. So the next one you're going to do is 7180. That's correct. Because you're that you're up to 617F. So the next one is 6180. Now the next one will be 61 Charlie 0. Charlie 0 then. Now if there was an ID in the product, it would have to appear at well, actually, the normal ID is downloaded when you power up to location 6235, 36, 37, 38, and 39. Where, else, where else can it be hidden in the U20? It has to be in a U20, right? Well, if I show you every area of U20, there's no reason why you would doubt this. Go ahead, go ahead. That's what I'm trying to get at. How many areas are there? How high will we go? 67FF. We're going to be here for a while, folks. <laughs> Just go through them faster. I can only push the buttons so quickly. <laughs> if you guys want to continue to call out the numbers, I'll be glad to... 6-2 Charlie Zero? Yeah. 6-2... 6 yeah. 6-3-40. 6380 63 Charlie 63 6400 6440 oops 6480 6480 6,500. You guys, you can see it pretty well flies once you get it going. 6,540. 6,580. 65, Charlie. 6,800. 6,600, sorry. Hey, looks like a message is in there. 65, what? 6,600. 6,600? Yeah. 6640. Oh, shouldn't show that one too long. Why was that? 6640. Well, Go ahead. We'll talk about that later. 6680. 66 Charlie. And 6700. I'm going to show you how a wizard chip works uh, and how it gets around a lot of the BS. As you remember before, okay, U20 data was sent to U7 to build the common monthly key. Okay, but because a wizard already has this information, you've given it the information, i.e. the front keypad, you don't have to worry about all this bullshit. Now, here's where the trick comes into place. When the channel key comes in, it's recalculated. then sent with the common monthly key, then sent to U5, and then to U4. Now, let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you why it's recalculated. What happens is they make sure that U7 comes up with a common monthly key, okay, of zeros. And I'll tell you why. Since they know that the common month or excuse me, the common monthly key is is X, and they know that the value in U7 is now zero because in the new U7s, GI very generously makes that that way if if it sees any type of tampering situation. 
And in the old U7s, it's very easy to, to zero the common monthly key area, which is registers 2 to 8. Well, what they do is since this is a known value, what the true common monthly key is, and since this is a known value, they recalculate knowing those values and change what the channel key data is that's sent to U7 as a part of the final calculation. Now what ha happens, it comes with the correct resultant that's sent to U5. And this is the way that the wizard chip works. A lot of people are also familiar in regards to where people clone an 0181 board in an 0181 atmosphere, meaning that the ID number in this 0181 board is 0181-1234, but in reality, the ID of the board is 018-alpha-5678. What they're doing is they're doing the same thing in regards to using this calculation method, but they're allowing all this data that normally stores up in U20 to happen and doing the calculations outside of U7 in regards to the DES algorithm. I know that was very abrupt and very brief, but that's basically how those 0181 clones are working in an 0181 atmosphere. I thank you. Well, do you want to play with your computer? Do you want to play with the video cipher? Do you want to not even buy a video cipher and just see how you can fool around with it? Well, you can now. There's a great program out there. And we're going to put this guy's telephone number up because I think he deserves some note. And uh, take a look at this tape. What we have here is a piece of software running on a PC computer uh, that is really one of the best development tools available for video cipher hackers. Uh, this software is called a simulator and in fact it simulates a complete video cipher in a PC. Uh, by the way, it's available from Hink Software at 313-662-2840 for about uh, $42.50. Uh, it's an excellent piece of software. We're going to run it right now at the current program counter and what this is doing is currently uh, decrypting the keys so that it can get the audio on a vid cipher and we're able to see the bits going through here at different addresses uh, primarily we're looking at the uh, 2000 and 4000 port on a video cipher as well as at uh, location 61 which actually is 62 63 64 and 65 uh, we're looking at 61 63 here which is the current month's hits and we see that it's uh, calculated that we have a 64 and down here we're looking at the registers where it's actually decrypting the keys. These are the secret keys that are uh, contained in U7 on a video cipher. Uh, we've let it run for a few moments because it's actually building up the current bytes for the month and we'll stop execution at this point and just go into the uh, examine memory feature here and we're going to examine memory at 61 63, which is in fact the actual address that this data is contained at in a video cipher. And we see the byte come up as C4233853130801 and F1. We now are getting into the authorization mask to tell us which channels it's authorized to. And we'll go through that and recognize immediately that there are no other stations authorized, uh, just this F1 here. So then we come to 6171. And for the next eight bytes, this will be the current month's turnoff. So we have two of them there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next byte should be zero, and it is. We'll have three zeros, and then we will have the current ID, the current month, which is uh, the service ID of A5, and two, three for the current month. So that simply shows that this computer, after having conditioned RAM, is able to operate just exactly like a video cipher. Now we'll go back and execute the program at the current program counter and let it continue. Again, it's decrypting the keys, which currently are key 0 and key 2. Those are the keys that GI is using. And in fact, uh, what this is, if we were to have some text messages come through now, they would come through here and this program will decode the packed Fujitsu strings, or 6-bit code, as it's called. In fact, it simulates a complete video cipher with the exception of U7 
but currently will operate the registers of U19, U30, and U20 RAM positions, and of course, separately, we can run the U7 position. We cannot run U7 and U20 and, and U19 at the same time for the simple reason that they both use the same address top down. They're two separate microprocessors. So we cannot have both of them at the same time. But we can see the port data going in and out, communicating between U24, U19, and U7. And of course, also U5, if we were to set it up for that address. So this is called a simulator, and it simulates a VC2 on any ordinary PC. In fact, it is part of the package that's included with the vCypher package from vCypher Technologies that uh, basically will teach you how to turn on a box. Of course, this offer is void where prohibited by law. We've recently, just now, hit an idle instruction, which is a 01, and we can go in and test what address we hit that idle instruction at. It will give us the uh, PC, and we, were, we went to 04. So in effect, we changed something before, and the code went berserk. With this tool, you can actually see uh, in a much slower form, of course, not in real time, you can actually see a vid cipher going through its routines to authorize and in fact can tell when the vid cipher has turned on. Uh, because a simulator operates anywhere from 500 times to 1,000 times slower on a PC than in a vid cipher, we can actually see what's happening. In preparing this report, I've gone all over. I've been to Toronto, been to Montreal, I've been to the South, been to the West. I've even been to Acapulco. Now, there's a great deal of controversy about a summit that took place in Acapulco. The old chippers were down there. Well, there were a few. And what did they talk about? What did chippers think of all this? Well, number one, chippers would like to talk to you programmers. Every chipper I know is not in it for the money. He's in it to survive and make sure his fellow dealer survives. Now, you might think it's all wrong, that everyone's breaking the law. But you really think about what was their alternative. Leave the business? You know, you've got to understand what you're dealing with here. You're not dealing with a typical type of guy that wants to work for somebody else, It's interesting in punching a clock, works 9 to 5, and is happy about it. You're dealing with a guy that got into this business to make a dollar, a fair dollar. He works hard. Probably most dealers work 80 hours a week. They've got the heart in this. They saw this as their way to not have to work for somebody else, to be an entrepreneur, to be a businessman. They never wanted to steal the programming. They just never wanted to leave this business, and there was no way to sell this programming or sell their services, their satellite equipment, without helping people steal the programming. People will not pay the money you want for that program because you want too much for it. Now, you can easily make three to four times what you're presently making off a subscription if you're willing to charge fairly for it. Now, you might have to go up against the cable monopolies to do that. But I think in the long run, everyone will recognize that we can coexist. Cable can exist with satellite, and satellite can certainly exist with cable. But we cannot, we cannot give up. These people that are fighting you, these people that are stealing from you, are not going to give up. They haven't given up to date, and the fear of some FBI agent walking in on them or I'm selling the box to the wrong guy is not going to stop him. This is his last, this is his last thing. This is like, it's, this is it. This is the way he sees it. He's not going to quit. And you're not going to scare him into it. He's going to keep on stealing from you and justifying it by saying he has to if he's going to stay alive. And he is. You know, truthfully, that's the bottom line. I'm going to leave you with the real chippers of Acapulco.
mean, here it is. There I am. Call it free enterprise. Call it freedom of the press. Call it a horrible mistake. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is America. You know? And we have something here that not every country has. Well, we have television. Uh, well, I mean, okay, we got a lot of other things too. We have what? We have freedom of religion. We have freedom of democracy. We have like the right to vote. Now, these things are all a lot more important than a lot of people realize. Okay? Now, I heard, for example, the other day, that over 40% of our electorate hasn't even registered to vote. Now, is it that much of a hassle to register to vote? Well, I'm asking you, because I have... The unit ID number is basically electric trash, and the service ID is C4, okay?